What we're gonna do today is talk about the audio to MIDI, which is basically magic, if you ask me. I started just using it to see what's gonna happen. We often talk about in making music, happy accidents, if you ever hear that term. It's like you just totally destroy something and it turns out to be a beautiful new sound that you would have never come across, but you just work with it from there. So that's kind of the way I've been approaching the audio to MIDI conversion. So I'm gonna take uh, some old music from the 70s and basically turn it into kind of like a more modern techno because that's kind of what it spit out when I tried it. So it's kind of fun. You never know what's gonna happen. This was literally 15 minutes of messing around with these clips. They sound nothing like what we start with. So, anyone know the old funk group Black Heat? Love the life you live. It's a simple wah guitar. And that turned into that techno synth line you heard. Pretty cool, right? So how do we do that? Well, start with the audio source. And you simply come in here and right click, right? and then you can convert harmony, melody, or drums. Sometimes for the fun of it, I will take a harmony piece and convert it to drums just to see what it's gonna spit out. You know, there's no right or wrong answers in making music. You just try it. If it doesn't work, scrap it, you know? It's that easy. So in this case, I know there's more than one note. It's not monophonic, but at the same time, it's a melody. So we're gonna start and try that. So really quick and easy, it spits it out. And the great thing about it is it creates an instrument for you so you can hear it right away. Uh, whether it's drums, whether in this case it's going to be a mixture of a lead and a Rhodes piano. And so here's what it sounds like now. That's totally hot, right? <laughs> That's what I want to base my, uh, my song around. Not at all. But the cool thing is, you know, work with it. Don't just say, oh, it's terrible and, and move on and try something else. See what you can do with it. So for instance, this is a kind of a neat, interesting line here, you know, the, the notes don't really fit. But the cool thing about Ableton is you have these tools, these MIDI tools that you can actually constrain it and make it work however you like. So for instance, what if I just went in and uh, let's try to use one of these MIDI effects called the, which one am I going to use here? Arpeggiator. Let's try the arpeggiator first actually. So if I double click, it'll load an arpeggiator. That's even cheesier, it seems, right? So first, let's dial in the song, right? I don't need this, uh... I want it all synth. And let's take a look. We know it's not snappy enough. I want it a little snappier. So what we're going to do is just grab the filter envelope and just kind of tweak it out a little bit. Turn it more into like a bass line kind of thing, right? Now it's still pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna print this yet. So let's work with a little bit more. Maybe we'll make it faster. I'm gonna lock it to the key of D. For some reason I seem to write in D minor always. If you ever watch uh, Spinal Tap. In D minor. Which I always find is really the saddest of all keys. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually use this scale function. So what I'm going to do is do a minor pentatonic, which is going to be very easy to work with and constrain it kind of nice. So we're just going to double click and it's going to put it right behind the arpeggiator. So I'm going to lock it to D. Let's put this up a couple steps. Kind of getting better, but now you might want to go in and actually adjust the MIDI information, right? So maybe this whole part doesn't work. I could come in here, I could try new things like let's just loop two bars in it. And in fact, I got a couple extra notes here, so we'll just go in and delete that one and kind of clean it up a little. So right away, we got something that's much easier to work with. 
Maybe it's a little loud. Let's, let's turn down some of these velocities here. Now, it's a one bar loop, which is going to get so repetitive, super loopy. I don't know if that's a real term, production term, but I use it all the time in our classes because when you're beginning, sometimes you just think about making one quick loop, it sounds good, and then you don't think of the bigger picture for the person listening to your loop, which is going to just over and over and until it becomes so just, it's all you can hear because it's not changing, there's no variation. So one thing you could do simply here, we'll go ahead and I'll hold option and drag, which will basically make a duplicate scene here. And then maybe we'll just grab these notes. And there's this new function here called inverse. So this is brand new to Live 9. You can just reverse, inverse, and kind of stretch MIDI notes and, and work with them however you want. So right away I might have, take the first clip, run that for three bars, and then the second clip I'll run for one bar as kind of a fill. So since we can do drums as well, let's play some drums. So immediately we can warp this. And let's loop it. So that works, but if I play these two together, it's kind of awkward. It's like an old vinyl break sped up and uh, you know, a techno arpeggiated riff. It kind of works, but who knows? So what we'll do is, again, right click, convert drums to new MIDI track. And so instantly this is gonna give us a new drum rack that is going to probably have an 808, I think is the default setting. Yep. So let's turn this guy off and let's listen now what it sounds like in a more techno way. It's a little spastic. The cool thing is there's a groove to it already. A lot of people use swing, a lot of people use fake grooves. Uh, there's nothing like the real thing. So if you can play in the drums, I always recommend doing that. But in this case, what I really like about this song is like the hi-hats have that shuffle, which is nice. Except now it just kind of sounds a little bit weird. So maybe I'll go in and I'll actually uh, just kind of tweak it a little bit. So for instance, I have an instance of battery. So what's cool about it is you're not just limited to Ableton Live devices too. So if I want to use something from Native Instruments or from any other company, we can go in and, and add that. So this is the new battery. And it's got some really nice modern electronic drum sounds. So right away, I'm gonna try seeing what we can get out of this one. And I know there's a great kit called the Neon Lights Kit. So we'll come out and I'm gonna just move this MIDI clip away from that 808 over to this more modern kind of kit and see what happens. It's all right. What if I just say, you know what, I know I want a four on the floor. I really want those hi-hats to provide the groove. And in fact, this is using a shaker, which I don't really want. So maybe I'll just switch it with a hi-hat. So we'll just overdub on top. I really just wanted those hi-hats out of that old drum loop. I'm a guitarist first and foremost, so I grew up playing heavy metal, shred guitar. I'm not a keyboardist. I taught myself to play as best I could. I'm not that great. I have to do a lot of MIDI cleaning up, but I can play the guitar and I get a lot of ideas playing the guitar that I don't get when I look at the keyboard. So lots of times I'll actually just play guitar, even if I'm not gonna use it, just to generate melody ideas or whatever. So once Ableton Live 9 came along, I'll just actually use my guitar and then convert the MIDI and then see what I can do with it later. Here is a terrible, like just a crappy acoustic guitar recording. When we convert harmony to new MIDI track, it's gonna give you piano, you're gonna see the notes, and you're probably, something will trick in your ear and say, I can do something with that. Now, it's a bit off. There's a lot of notes in here actually too, right? But again, a little MIDI editing will go a long way. You can even see, like, it's picking up. It's so accurate that it's actually picking up when I swipe the, the strings with my hand movements, when I'm changing chords and stuff like that. So I just got in there and cleaned it up a little bit. You know, it takes 30 seconds or whatever. 
and it gave me a nice output here. Maybe I move that over to a synthesizer. I kind of created this fake side chaining pad in Massive, and I'll show you how. So it's pretty cool. Basically, again, look, no presets. And these are these really cool things called performers and steppers. So what a stepper is, is obviously it's a step sequencer. All it's doing is basically turning on the amplitude at, at certain times. The other one I really like is the performer. And what the performer does is actually loads in envelope curves. And you have two 16 step sequencers. So at one point, you can basically tell the amplitude to follow this wacky curve, however you're gonna do it. And you don't always just have to put on amplitude, you can put it on filters, any kind of parameter. You see all these little boxes inside of Massive have a slot for you to do the modulation. The modulation is coming from there. And of course we can tweak it out and treat it differently. That's kind of long and short of it. I mean, that's just a simple idea. It's, this is by no means a finished product, but uh, it's sparked an idea that I can easily write to now. I know what key it's in. I know how I can add more things. It's something, I promise you, I would have never came up with that melody, any of that stuff, by sitting down at the keyboard. That's the real treat about it. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.